Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Casca and I like to make things. In today's video I'll be making a gothic Victorian corset. I love making corsets. I'm still not great at them but I've made quite a few over the years. I first started making them back in the early 2000s for going clubbing and going to festivals. I found a pattern in my local fabric shop and without any knowledge of how to even read a pattern, I did my best to make something fun. None of them had busks because I had no idea where to get one. They were all hand stitched because I didn't have a sewing machine yet and the boning would poke through under my arms because I had no idea what flossing was. The corsets I made probably came to around 15 quid total for materials. I had a couple of nice ones that were bought for me as presents, but what I really wanted was one of the super pretty Tradgoth ones. I'd see them in places like Affleck Palace in Manchester or in the market at Infest, and I wanted one so, so badly, but they were super expensive. So now, I decided I was going to make the corset I always wanted but couldn't afford. Only this one is even better because it fits my body perfectly and it's not just fit for the average body shape. I wanted this corset to work well as an undergarment for costuming but also look good enough to wear as an outer garment too for if I ever go to a goth night or festival again. This thing took so many mock-ups. I would run through each one in detail but this video would end up being like five hours long so I'll just do a little run through of what each one was like and how I altered it along the way. Right let's get started. Okay so I've whipped the backdrop up just so that you can see a little bit better the kind of things that I have to contend with when making a corset or any item of clothing really. The most obvious one probably straight off the bat, it dips. This isn't a problem as much but because of the actual dips, because in order to get a nice smooth shape, padding. Where I have problems is because hip dips, 100% normal, it's just to do with your anatomy. The reason why I have such prominent hip dips is because there's a really big gap between top of my pelvis and my femoral head. It's, there's a really big gap there so that's where I've got such a prominent hip dip. Corsetry wise where I've run into problems with the shop bought corsets before is there's not been enough hip spring also generally the waist isn't high enough as well but the main problem is the hip spring so what ends up happening is the corset will try and flatten these bits out and then there's nowhere for it to go so when I try and cinch obviously I don't want to be doing tight lacing but I'd like to at least get an hourglass figure but with shop book corsets that just can't it, it won't happen the other thing that I have issues with is asymmetry I've got one leg that's longer than the other so my pelvis is tilted. I've also got one side that sticks out a little bit further than the other so no matter what any corset I make isn't going to look perfectly symmetrical because I'm not and I don't think anybody is really so. Okay so I will do a quick run through of some of the mock-ups because some of them I didn't film because they looked so bad but I am filming this after making the corset because when I actually wanted to film these bits it was like I think it was about 35 degrees in the flat and you do not want to see that you don't trust me <laughs> anyway making a corset this is the pattern I worked from as you can see I started off by making it a little bit bigger overall this was because the waist was a 20 inch and there's no way that's fitting me I also used a back piece I made with some eyelets that I was never going to use and a front piece with a busk that was a tad too big. These are handy because I can just rip them out and use them in another mock-up later on. Thank you. 
Mock up number one was way too big. It was closing all the way at the back and there was too much room in the bust and hips. Mock up number two was a little bit better but the fit around the hips was just wrong. I was advised by people in a corsetry group to bone it and see how it behaved after that. For the boning I used synthetic whale bone. This is great because it's nice and flexible and moulds itself to your body with heat. It's also a lot easier to cut and file down than steel. Mock-up number three fit a lot better around the bust but the hip area was still wrong. I did another mock-up with different shaped gauze but I still wasn't getting the fit I wanted. Okay, well there's your problem. It's literally, the skin is bulging out here. Yeah. The shape that I was using was never going to work with that. After experimenting with a different pattern for a bit, then going back to the old pattern but putting the gauze in the centre of each panel rather than in between each panel, I finally felt confident enough to cut into my fashion fabric. I did my best to pattern match, but didn't quite have enough fabric to match all the panels. I attached the bust gauze to the second panel. I then stitched together the front panels, making sure to leave gaps for the bus hooks to poke through. These were pressed the right side out. I couldn't be bothered getting the big ironing board out for such small pieces. I changed to a zippered foot and stitched around the busk. I always worry that I'm going to hit the metal because my machine's like one of the cheap ones and it doesn't have proper speed control. I poked holes for the other side of the busk with an awl. I don't like to cut into the fabric because I find that it weakens it and it can fray. This side of the busk was then stitched into place.
I used two steel bones for the back panel, leaving a gap in between them for the eyelets. I used my zipper foot so I could stitch as close to the bones as possible. Next, I basted a guideline in the slits for the bottom gore pieces. This also helped to make sure the two fabrics stayed in line. I turned them in and ironed them before attaching the gauze. These were top stitched in place and the underside folded under. Once all the gores were in place, I stitched all the panels together with the seams on the outside. I did end up seam ripping the second and third panel though and doing the seam on the inside because I realised it wasn't going to work with the seams of the bust gores being that way round. At this point I inserted the eyelets. I wanted to be able to check the fit before finishing all my seams. I used an awl to poke the holes through the fabric and eyelet pliers to secure the eyelets. This was super hard and I had to put all my body weight into it. After a quick fit test I was happy to finish my seams. I ironed them open using a tailor's ham and then trimmed them down so they would be hidden by the boning channels. The ends were then whip stitched down.
I attached my boning channels by first stitching down the centre and then down each side so I could get two bones in. I then added bias tape to the bottom. Because I want to do flossing later, I drilled holes in the ends of the bones. This was also super fiddly. After inserting all the bones, I added bias tape to the top. The final steps were to add lace to the top and a hook to the busk at the bottom. This is legit my favourite thing I've made. Just look at how nice and smooth it is. There's no wrinkling and it just fits so well. It took a lot to get to this point though. I think I ended up making about seven mock-ups and I even changed the entire design at one point because I was getting so frustrated with it. I think I've achieved what I set out to make. This works well as an historical corset for costuming and I could totally wear this in a club. If I ever do go out clubbing again that is. I think the fabric is beautiful and works so well. I may change the lace at some point if I find something better but I do love the way it looks. I'll also be swapping out the ribbon at the back for something stronger and plain black. I have ordered something but it hasn't arrived yet. The only thing that's left to do now is the decorative embroidery at the top and bottom of the bones, but I'm leaving that for a separate video for Cozy, which is from the 19th until the 22nd of August, so keep an eye out for that. CosTube Symposium is an online interactive event organised by the CosTube community. If you enjoyed CoCovid last year, then you're going to love Cozy. There will be YouTube videos, live panels, premieres and events on Instagram and Discord. I'll leave a link in the description with more information. 
If you enjoyed this video and fancy giving it a like, it would be very much appreciated. I'm always open to your suggestions and constructive criticisms, so anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see more videos of me trying to make things, then why not subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified next time I upload a video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!